We're yeah. live, boy. <laughs> We're live. We're fucking live. Oh, you heard it here first. We're everybody. with Mr. Campbell, <laughs> a.k.a. Truthless. How you doing, baby face? Dude, I'm doing all right. Thank you so much for having me it's on. It's been a few years since we saw you. Yeah, it has been a hot minute, man. And it's, it's beautiful to be reunited in such a such a picturesque setting. Yeah, this is old, uh, <laughs> these are old toilets. Are they? Yeah, that, yeah, d- that explains the the tiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the smell of piss. <laughs> <laughs> Dry ass beds. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen a room, room haunted by urine before. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is what it looks like. This is <laughs> one of those Scooby Doo moments where you take the fruit and put it off. It's like a urinal cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna yeah. fucking put your head as a urinal cake. Lewis, if we knew how to edit anything, uh, <laughs> what's post production, bro? Yeah, bro. <laughs> we don't understand Use an it. AR filter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so how the how the the fuck's life been? What's been happening in your world over oh, the last homie. four years? <laughs> yeah, that's a loaded question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> shit. Do it. Do it. Do a one-minute version of what's happened in your life the last since we. Started. All right. So since we last spoke, I believe I was living in Stockton, which, for the people who don't know, is a sleepy little town that is t- a hamlet. I think a hamlet. Uh, yeah, a peninsula <laughs> past some coal mines, which is like. As the crow flies quite close to Newcastle, as culture flies very fucking far. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Stockton is stuck in the 1970s and, yeah, we were stuck in Stockton. And, <laughs> yeah, I think that was when I was, I was People doing long that. for those times. What was it really like? Oh, man, Stockton was beautiful. I fucking miss it. I miss it every day, every time I'm here. from there? No, 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 no. That, that was the best part. For a period. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, fuck it. Rent's cheap up there. Let's go, darling. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the age-old thing of, we work from home. We can do this. And then you get there and you're like, whoa, baby. <laughs> This yeah. is different. Domino's is rated 4.9 out of 5 here. <laughs> oh, you think Domino's delivers to Stockton? <laughs> I swear I thought it would be the only restaurant in the town. <laughs> Oh, that's a name brand, my friend. <laughs> it's still Terry's. It is still that Terry's like, straight pizza. Up, yeah, straight yeah. up, straight up. Yeah, it'll be the like, little yeah. heavy ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you has got a mattress out the back that he sleeps on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like some Just boxing fucking full of dude. pepperoni. Yeah, it's no, so Stockton's good. a whack place, man. Yeah, they're, um, they're shout they're, out to Stockton. Oh no, I fucking love Stockton. Don't get me wrong. It's uh, famous for being a shark breeding ground, so it's got a beautiful beach, but. Oh yeah, no. one of, of my one of the dudes that I grew up, he he was like a second father to me. Shout outs to Alan Perry, um, and he uh, now lives on the foreshore of Newcastle, and he gets his ocean gun kayak and he fishes for brim out the back near Stockton Beach. <laughs> he like just goes out there and goes along. He goes sw- goes uh, surfing and uh, and and just ocean going kayaking with a fucking like a line out the back, like going for fucking fish. I'm like. You're insane. He's like, yeah, it's, you know, I've seen sharks for sure. I'm like, you've got live bait out the back, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> Why do you dress like a fish? <laughs> it's like, fuck him. Yeah, yeah, fuck him. <laughs> I've got this really rickety fucking boat. It's not a boat. Dude. It's a fucking, it's a, it's a fucking moment away yeah, from fucking death. Yeah, dude, dude, it's worse than a surfboard because you're stuck in that shit. Yeah. Dude, it's so fucking hilarious. Oh, man. Some dudes just have that gene, you know? Just he couldn't give a fuck. Somebody's got the crazy gene. He could not give a fuck. It's so weird to see. I, I always wind him up about it. I'm like, how close are you to death at every point of your life? One he's like, one, yeah, one more divorce. You know? <laughs> 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 uh, that'd do it for those old fellas. It's so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. So to, to catch you up, basically, like after Stockton, there was a bit of a family tragedy on Fliss's side, which kind of catalyzed a move. Uh, I just gloss over it. No need to mention. But yeah, Fliss's mum died like quite suddenly of cancer. And then we were like, well, shit, let's go look after her dad. So yeah. next minute, we end up ricocheting into Tamworth, which is where Felicity's from. Wow. And we're looking after her dad. And that was, oh, man, like looking after a, like a recently widowed man. That, that's a in f- Tamworth. fucking intense time. Yeah. That was, yeah, a real gnarly six months. And we were kind of in there, but like, the the benefit you never want to say benefit in these types of situations but the benefit was not paying rent <laughs> which i mean like, upsides to death oh, oh homie i'm an opportunist and like <laughs> like you know if i'm not paying rent that, that's kind of like when i started going hard on content because i was like oh fuck it like you know i've got some time and i'm I, like you know cause i was working one day a week for a mate of mine back in sydney and then i was like oh i got six days to make some shit so that's yeah. when i was like you know, I was like, oh, I wonder if I could just film myself. And so that was real fun. After we got bored of Tamworth, the homie who I was working for one day a week in Sydney was like, oh, dude, do you want to come get a job down here? And we're like, yeah, all right. So I go for a job interview and I was like, oh, I may as well line up a house inspection. 
get a house inspection and like within two days get the rental just like like sheer luck yeah because this dude he's like oh man my house has fallen apart but you guys seem like good people would you pay less than less than you know this area rate i'm like fucking oh by <laughs> <word."> <laughs> no <laughs> he's like yeah electricity doesn't work here water doesn't work here you'll get zapped by the don't tap. try to put the two together <laughs> yeah 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 zapped by the tap <laughs> yeah oh no straight up that was that was a thing that was a thing yeah yeah yeah. i had, I had to get a mate over to be like oh bro like you, you could have died and i was like and I, I, i'm like i'm like one of those dudes who like only has table manners in the right situation. So I'm like, I'll, I'll fucking like, like fucking drink from the tap. You know, <laughs> not, not a bitch. Like a, yeah, <laughs> like a dog with fucking opposable thumbs. <laughs> Straight up, bro. Straight up. So yeah, then we end up moving, moving back to the freaking inner west. Oh, it's like a boomerang, this place. Honestly, it's like a magnet. It's a hard yeah. place to move away from, huh? Oh, dude. It, it, it gets in you somewhere. So you're from, yeah. from this sort of Oh, zone. nah. I was, uh, oh man. All over. We got time. Yeah. Okay, loaded questions. Question. Yeah, you, you know those. Uh, you know that kid uh, who was like the new kid at your school and then left the year after. Came back with a different last name. Oh, uh, like no, no, no. Just straight up was there for like one year and then went to a new school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was me. It. That was me. Was Jake, <laughs> yeah. Jake had kind of similar. Oh, yeah. did you? You I moved bounced, around a lot. I bounced around. Oh, true. I hate, I hate. Yeah, I'm a bouncer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I uh, got, I, got the perfect. I ended up. Uh, I worked out okay for me. Mm. I think it's you know like uh, that old thing. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Is is pretty true. I think it's a. Uh, Especially as a kid, like you learn resilience. Kind of ice, dude. And it, you know, when you when you look at like this, you know, the fragility of current generations and 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 the kind of what's going on in the world. Like I, t- I, what what could have easily been resentful in a different, what could have been a resentful kind of thing in different and a different time. It taught me a lot about me and who I am, and and just been like, well. This is who I'm stuck with. I better like this guy because <laughs> no one else does. And yeah. yeah, and I'm. I, I go to bed with me, and I, you know, You're like, make, well, one, I make love to myself. It. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> and I'm practicing this a lot. You know, when I was fucking like, realized really quickly, it didn't like bullying. <laughs> 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 and I really like glitter. <laughs> I really like glitter, the man. Musical theatre. Hundred percent. You know, it's an interesting fucking way. Honestly, it's underrated by the straight community. Musical theatre. I will say that. It's fucking. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's a great time. If you, you can't know, enjoy Les Miserables, you're a fucking <laughs> yeah. drag it. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's my favorite word from TikTok. <laughs> like you end up on, yeah, no, you end up on gay TikTok hella, hella quick. Like just because, like you know, you end up just like you prefer the hipsters, and then that like quickly devolves into like you know the algorithm being like, oh, here's all the the you know like young 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 gay kids like expressing themselves, right? And then like you know the, the slur that they're just dropping on the daily is strag it. <laughs> <I'm like>, strag <laughs> it? It's fucking gnarly, like dude. I've never heard that it's before. Oh, dude, Gen Z's on one. They're fucking wild. That's great. <laughs> yeah, man, I love them. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that's we, great. Yeah. 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 We got as far as people Drag go. It. How we got fucking <laughs> good is it? We got as far oh, as people to go. Say like, that one. Street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's so stupid to be like street. Street. <laughs> Strag it. I can use that one all I want. It's so good, man. Not, that's yeah. me. I saw this dude also make like an apology video. Like he's like, okay, Was this is me in twenty thirty, and he's like, like an impression of my. I never meant to say strag it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fuck with TikTok much? I don't get uh, it. I'm I did, not, I I did until it. I realized I was fucking addicted. Like, really? oh man. I, I, in I, the I, same way all socials are addictive? Uh, like in it's the same way the everything are addictive? in life in addic- is addictive. I just I just got that fucking bone that like, you know, the second I get something that makes me happy, I'm like, okay, oh, can I have just all of it? Do this for yeah. I, I'd like all of it. Thanks, like immediately. <laughs> yeah, so like, I don't know. I got, I got to put blocks blocks in, in place like when I, when I start getting into something. I used <laughs> to, like, because obviously a lot of your work now is on platform. So uh, what I was actually interested in asking you about like where you draw the line, obviously in the, the, the idea behind kind of socials anxiety mm. is a thing. Like it's not social anxiety, it's not regular kind of social anxiety, but it's socials anxiety, where the, how to perform, how to be. And then also if you've got a little bit of self-awareness, the idea of the fact that you're spending way too much time on it oh, and that creating its own anxiety and addictions and stuff. But your job is literally – being on it and creating content for it. Do you have a fucking line that you traverse uh, or that you want to traverse that, that's kind of like the healthy spot? And we're like, what's the good ones and what are the bad ones? I, I, Kenny and I fucking got off it. Yeah, that's smart, man. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's such a, oh God, it's a blessing and a curse, I think. Like, because... I, I think anybody listening to this could relate to this following sentence in the fact that like if you've got a career that in some way relies or uses social media to make your career bigger, then you're kind of fucked. <laughs> you, you, yeah. can't, you can't have it perfect. 
And yeah, yeah, because it's like I don't know. You want so much stuff, but then obviously there's. I don't, have you seen the social dilemma? No, no. I've been. I've been. Fl- I saw, I've seen it, it pop yeah. up on my fucking. People were asking YouTube. us, and I've had a Netflix. little read and yeah, chat man, with someone about it. I think it'll it'll be like one of those documentaries that I think most people will get around. But yeah, it's it's kind of like about the just. Oh, what's the right word? The shameless, yeah, that's the right word. The, the, the shameless tactics that are used when designing this tech to make them like deeply addictive to people yeah. and, and just how gnarly it gets. So I guess to answer your question, the line that I walk or at least the line that I would like to walk would be to never ever look at it and to only ever use it and to not be emotionally yeah. affected by that's, it. That's the, that's the key. But it's, Use it's it. unrealistic. Like, and, or maybe it isn't unrealistic and I'm just putting that, self, putting that shit on me. But like, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Because I, I read You're this, right. I read this thing um, today, actually. About <clears throat> I think it was an interview with you from like 2017. I think this time they were like, and he's got he's got like eight thousand followers, <laughs> and it's like this guy's blowing up. And then that's like fucking nothing to what you where you're at now. But <clears throat> you spoke about having the for the first time having an audience to sort of bounce your artwork off, and they were inspiring you to sort of you know push it further or letting you know where boundaries were if they wanted more for you. Like, is that, you know, with about 250,000 followers now, is it, is it still the same relationship with them? Is there a lot of bullshit on there? Like, people just, like, that whole idea of if you get too big, are people giving you shit? Or do you still <laughs> feed off of that interaction? That do you read your own you? comments? Uh, yeah, right. No, um, uh, yes and yes to both of those things. Mm. So, I'll answer the positive one first. Yeah, I totally still ask people for their opinion and respect people's opinion, even though I don't, like, personally know them or anything. I'm, yeah. I just figured, like, if you follow me, you're probably pretty similar to me. Yeah, and like you probably think the same that I do, or you know, by and large, that that would be correct. I feel yes. Um, so you know, you're probably going to have a good opinion, and because you grew up in like just statistically, everyone's grown up different. Because you grew up different, you're going to have a different idea, but hopefully, like the same kind of attitude towards everything. So, like, yeah, I definitely still ask people. I think um, I'm more sensitive than probably people that I see around me. Uh, who who kind of get big online. Um, not that I would call myself big online yet, but like, you know, the people that I've seen get big and stuff, like I, for some reason I bestow onto them some sort of confidence that I just don't think I have. I think I'm too sensitive. Like, mm. and I think I, I really do give a shit about people and like, in, in, like just being nice and stuff. And so the bigger, think. yeah, kind of like the, I notice one thing in me is that the more followers I got, the less rogue i got and the less attention seeking i got and the less gnarly i got yeah like because i felt like i no longer needed to i guess prove myself and i no longer really like backed myself to make wild political statements either yeah yeah yeah. because i was like oh fuck man like who the fuck am i i don't know it kind of like humbled me out just seeing so many like anytime i'd make make some sort of hot take just saying like haters galore and i'm like hmm yeah i also love but galore that, but that's also like a massive way of guaranteeing an audience mm. the more controversial you know we're 100%. talking before the podcast and you know i think you you know you mentioned like that you know outrage porn and and the idea of getting hooked into that where this is what all that people are you end up being reduced to the least common the lowest common denominator nice. and the 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 most uh, you know the most base of human instincts which ultimately and we're talking about this on another podcast um, with, a, with our friend Mike Rodriguez um, on time at the Time Out podcast, and you know the idea of like where tech companies could have taken society if they had have been interested in community and and in human flourishing as opposed to advertising dollars and revenue, and you know the, the, the it's riding that fucking world of being like, well, you can guarantee a big following, but you're also going to guarantee a lot of hate. Yeah, and you're gonna and you either have to be. St- you have either have to be just – I think it's almost as shameless as being a Kardashian. <laughs> you know, like you're selling yourself out for something you're not really. You know, it's very unlikely that you're, you know, you're such a polarising figure. That if you're re- – like Alex Jones is like one of the only people kind of <laughs> like that who you're like – Oh, that guy's the same on screen, off screen. Oh, fuck. You know, oh, you know what dude. I mean? Whereas most of these Whereas other people they, are like, they're mining, how can we be the most offensive? How can we be the most divisive? And that will guarantee us fucking clicks. If we pair, pair that with clickbait, we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna build following through this really fundamental uh, des- human desire, which is to see and, uh, and identify with conflict. But ultimately, you know, I think the game is to build it with positivity because yeah. You can do it, and I think you're doing it. If you can read your comments and 95% of them are positive, you're fucking winning the game. 
Cool, cool. I'll I'll just put that I think in, so. in, in, the, I, in the storage unit. That, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I quite like that as a metric. Yeah, I think, and it might be a little slower in in terms of, and no, there's nothing slow about what what you've been achieving. But ultimately, if you can get there like that, then surely that's the goal. Surely the goal is to I be agree. surrounded by positivity and love. That, and that's that's, that's what, what I you're think. And too. like, there are there are people that I admire online, and like when I see them, I'm like, fuck you just did it right from the start and they're, they're, they're people not like 10 times out of 10 they're people who have some sort of positivity around them and yeah. i'm like oh, okay that's way cool and yeah I, don't know, that's I think when you when you feed off that negativity which we just said like, a lot of people do i think there's a power to change you as a person like that thing when you are quite sensitive to people's commentary on you and you, and you take it deeply they just create this thick skin and create this persona that's just like I don't give a fuck, and it's it's not real. Yeah, it's just yeah. completely false. I think like no one it's wants Kardashian to go around pick, false. No one mm. wants to go around pick it. It's literally like that high school bully. Like just yeah. just pick a fight with everyone and standing in front of you. Like yeah. what's <laughs> fucking wrong with you? Hundred <laughs> percent. And it, you, you do see the loneliness and the desperation. I think if you're if you're around any sort of um, if you become aware of of any platform that you're on, you can really start smelling that desperation pretty clearly. Like you're saying shit for the sake of saying shit because you know shit. it's going to get fucking clips and monetized. And ultimately, I think that you know that's that's using any sort of platform at its very base, the base level. And you know, I'm a big human. I'm a big believer in that humans have better things to offer each other and the world than clickbait fucking right <laughs> yeah. and hate speech and Damn. and oh, and not, yeah. i'm not talking about hate speech in that ku klux klan fucking vibe i'm talking like just saying shit more for insidious sake. kind of like so i've been thinking about women yeah, <laughs> yeah dude 100 kind of yeah yeah interesting white boy <laughs> <laughs> which ultimately does everyone i think a massive disservice because you know what it's what it served to do is isolate men out of a conversation we actually should be a part of. In the same way, women should critique men. Women, sensible, like well-meaning, well-intentioned men should fucking critique elements of female, of like the of, of feminism. Because it's if it's a sensible fucking critique, then it is the sensible critique rests upon what it is. It's you crazy. Know? It's crazy at the moment that like yeah, yeah you can be di- <laughs> di- discredited quite quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, do you buy I, into the fact that you can though? I mean I, I, we're, we're getting into space that you don't really that's not what you're about um, and feel free to answer or not but yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you feel like that the discrediting the cancel culture is a legitimate fucking uh, uh, way of anyone expressing themselves of course not that, of course not like it, it's it takes like it's a very thin slither and I um, mean, we, we don't have to get too into it because, like, the conclusion always ends up like this, right? We need accountability culture. We need forgiveness. We need compassion. We need blah, 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 blah. And more understanding would make everyone good. And then let's not do anything. Of course, there's a sliding scale of what should be cancelled if you fucking, you know, do something real bad. Like, fuck you. But if For it's sure. something that's like, you know, like a, like, Ah, where, where, where the consequences aren't going to have any lasting effects. Yeah. yeah, like like maybe let's forgive each other. Because that's all. I mean, that's yeah, always existed. If you do something, if you do something fucking terrible. It's always existed that you know you're kind of um, you know ostracized from society. But now it's <clears throat> when people are crawling back to you know twenty years in someone's past when maybe they were like an alcoholic or a drug addict and they've done something stupid and it's like. You did that in 1987. And then the, then the person yeah. who's getting cancelled <laughs> yeah. is also like, I also hate the person I used to be in 1987. Yeah. Like, yeah. trust me, you and I are on the same side here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, no, nope, me- pack your fucking bags when and move into Stockton. <laughs> yeah, when there's not. <laughs> 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 That's welcome, what happened. Welcome That's to what Papa happened. Jake's Pizzeria, Ooh, baby. <laughs> Wait for that pizza to fucking, wa- that one slice of pizza to weigh fucking 450 grams, bro. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> no, Terry's a sick on, bro. Terry's a sick on. <laughs> <laughs> so, th- look, I, I'm really interested in uh, one of the things I, I've I've taken a lot from conversations I've seen where you're just talking to a camera. Oh yeah, is um, that your engagement with the role of what it is to be an artist? Oh yeah, and of being a productive artist. And one of the things that I'm really interested in, in, in right now is, you know, Kenny and I are in the creative industries, but we're not old. Ult- we're not ultimately. Uh, artists of any description, you know, publicly, and but we're, we're kind of responsible and uh, for, you know, two venues that, that nurture and and kind of have a role to play in, in specifically music, um, uh, the music industry in Sydney specifically, and and I feel like there's a 
there's, there's a lack of understanding within very young people around what they're asking for. They're asking to be an artist uh, <laughs> and they don't know what that means or the sense that it could come with some sort of, using that term, could come with some sort of weight of responsibility. They just want to be an artist. And um, it's a huge thing to be an artist and it comes with a, a terrifying amount of responsibility as far as I'm concerned. And it's something that I've seen kind of develop in, in your conversation with your audience online, which is one of, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to set myself targets, I'm going to hold myself accountable for them, I'm going to fucking deliver on them. And I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about your journey to that point and like what it means for you to not just have talent because it, uh, everyone's got our talent, um, but okay. what it is to actually turn it into a responsible and accountable uh, life and, and and oh yeah yeah it's it's so it's, yeah no I, I hear what you're saying so like sort of the the distinction between I guess being creative and the distinction between that and like having some sort of like creative either like career or opinion that gets taken seriously by a large number of people right um so yeah and the ethic that gets and, you and the ethics like because the ethics you can't ignore like if you're a good person the ethics going to creep in and they're going to make all your shit vanilla. Like, I'm sorry, that's just the reality. I'm but talking more like ethic as in work ethic. Though. Oh, the work, eth the work ethic. The work ethic that gets yeah. you there. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. We can, we can definitely talk about work ethic. I guess, like, man, it's – I – hmm. How would you talk about work ethic? What's the, what's the right way to talk about that? It, w would we talk as if somebody is listening to this and they are lazy? Or would we talk about – Somebody who listening who's listening to this and they have a good work ethic, but they need to keep going. What do you reckon the right way to talk about it is? Whatever, whatever your path to finding what okay, okay, to okay, finding okay. some sort of so meaningful output was I, for you. I, I think I let's see. Before I do, I was definitely scattered and maybe a little bit entitled. I think in the sense that I was like, oh, like I should. Sh should I get something or no? Not entitled. No. Hmm. I want. I want to nail this. Take your time, baby. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Um, I think. Okay, so here's here's the like brutal reality of everything is, and this is gonna sound a little bit inspirational, YouTuber, but sometimes I like to walk that line. <laughs> yeah. That's all we're here for. Yeah, <laughs> is clicks. Hit the subscribe and the bell button. <laughs> I swear to fuck, if you don't, you're fucked. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so like I think with the work ethic thing is it's it's the only re it's the only prerequisite of any of this thing. You know what I mean? Like if if like and at least where I know I'm headed, the people who are in playing in the leagues where I would like to play, like they've got a better work ethic than me. And that's the only thing, that's the only distinction that I can see. And the mm -hmm. person yeah, that I used to be has a work worse work ethic than me. So I guess it's just trying to get a better work ethic. But what, what does worth it, work ethic mean? I, and I guess like the older I get, the more I realize this is pretty much just doing boring shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, and forcing yourself through the middle of the project because the start of a project's easy as fuck, right? Because you're so excited and everything's really, really cool. The end of a project's easy as fuck because you're like, oh man, I'm on the home stretch. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. fucking nail it. <laughs> but like 80% of any kind of project is in the middle, and all it is is solving problems and bullshit that flies your way. Yeah. And writing emails and just being a fucking bad guy and like missing deadlines on other shit. It's it's the shit. It's the, it's the worst kind of thing. And so I think like it's life. It's where no, it's no, where the up. beauty. Be I, I believe yeah, yeah, yeah. where the beauty actually is found. Yeah. It's 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 like yeah all the mess and all the shit that like makes people think oh this interrupted my project it's like yeah. nah homie like those emails all the shit that went wrong that is the project like <laughs> and I suppose you count yourself yeah. lucky that that's the shittest part of your job mm. like just still working away on your own project to sort of get it somewhere like that's this that's how shit it gets for you but well, that's that's in some jobs that's the highlight oh yeah <laughs> no, 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 no. yeah you know you bang on the money man and like it's funny like like just the concept of reality checking we were talking about flood flex's podcast the other day yeah. And she opened with this story about this Liberian warlord who, like, slaughtered 20,000 people. Uplifting. It's, yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, made child sacrifices and all this sort of shit. And, like, like before the podcast, I was, like, thinking, man. Sounds like the start of a fucking Marvel film. <laughs> yeah, right. No, straight up. Yeah, it's, like, it's a fucking gnarly origin story, right? Like, but, like. Christopher Nolan Marvel. <laughs> yeah. 
but before the pod, I, like before I, I saw her, I was like, oh man, I'm kind of like feeling like I feel like I've had a shitty day, you know, like I can't remember what it was, but something didn't quite go my way, and I like <laughs> focused on that because I'm a fucking idiot, yeah. <laughs> and then I get in there and she's like, so. General Butt Naked slaughtered 20,000 people and most of them were children and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sheltered as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm stressing about a deadline that I haven't even missed yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe maybe I don't know to answer your question perspective. <laughs> well, what's that video of you with, um? is it Mark and Gilly, the, the, the artist you worked uh, for? Yeah. And that, that sort of, yeah. and, you know, if there was a sliding doors moment where just that, that um, advice to say, just pick one fucking thing. Oh, yeah. Do it every day. Yeah, he was real good. So, like, yeah, contextually, basically, what happened for for, for the keen listeners um, was, yeah, like, I, I was pretty we much... We only have keen listeners. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I suppose if, if you're this far it's me, in... If it's me while I edit. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. Kenny while I'm editing. <laughs> and our parents. <laughs> <laughs> and now your parents. <laughs> ah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mum, stepdad, dad, stepmum. <laughs> Peace <laughs> <How are you>? <laughs> <laughs> all, all four of you. Yeah, um, yeah. So, you so, joke. So, dude, I just... We jest. I just, I just doubled that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you um, did. Uh, yeah, um, no, I but... Four too. <laughs> ah, do you? Like three or something. <laughs> oh, skits. I got so many. How, <laughs> many. how many parents you got? I like just in real terms, just two. But then the in-laws, they, they, they seem to be multiplying. Skits, skits. About yourself, Kenny. I've got yeah. Um, my parents separated. I don't know, like longer than they were married. Yuck. For, married don't for twenty-five years. Have no shame. They were married for twenty-five years, <laughs> and now it's like they're almost. You come from a broken home. This is separated, disgusting. Separated longer than they were together. Which is a big man. Seriously, yeah. se- separated, separated, but still married. Technically, no, no, no. no they s- no, they split up and got divorced. But yeah, they're probably been split up now longer than they were. And they wow. they, hit, they hit that. Was it diamond wedding? Twenty five years. Hit, uh, hit that. No, no, no that's not diamond. Diamond's like fifty. Oh, whatever it is then silver maybe. But yeah, longer than they were together. That's a fucking wow. long innings. Damn. Right. That's yeah. cool. So I got four. But neither. Oh no, my mum got married. My dad's not married, but they've been together for like twenty. Yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Families, I right? I haven't given him the link yet. I was just worried of case I said something shit. And he's like, send me that link. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we send you the link of to this the one, twenty-five Dad. fucking podcasts you've done. For the, a given. the link. I was texting him for a given. He's like, send me the link. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> how, how good to send someone a link, but <laughs> <laughs> especially sending your parents link. What do I do with it? Oh, oh, trying man, to, trying yeah. to put it on their wall. Oh God, it typing it in. Write it down off an email and then just mail it then to them. Ri- then write it in. I mail it to them in a movie. So what's the next bit? <laughs> it's www. The no, 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 no. You start with <laughs> HTTP. It's the whole thing. So now you got to press shift. And, and this is why we have fucking sixteen <laughs> listeners. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, there it so is. So where were we? Uh, I believe they're doing every every day. The oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So Mark, Mark's sort of like so Mark was artist made like these dog and rabbit sculptures, which I mean, ah yes, yeah, yeah. You might have seen around Sydney. They're very um dogs like, on vespas and yeah, shit. all that yeah. kind of shit. Yeah, very, very, very buyable art. Yeah. And yeah, like pretty much, I was I was just kind of like a whiny young kid, and I was like, oh man, I, I don't know why I'm I'm not you. And he pretty much he 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 tough loved it, dude. He was just like. Well, you keep doing different things and expect it to add up something. So, like, he'd be like, oh, you know, like, you make a podcast and then you uh, design a beer label and then you, you know, do some freaking wall art. And he's like, homie, that's that's, that's not a that's not what art and is. And then do some ridiculously cool fidget spinner fucking Yeah, yeah, straight up, commentary. straight up. And he's like, yeah. And so he's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly that. So he's like, do you think, I don't know, take any artist who's like an artist who's popping right now. Uh, okay, I'll take I'll take one from my teenage years. Do you think Simple Plan wants to write another emo song? No, but they write like continuous emo songs, and like that's how that's the reality of an art career. That's the reality of making money off creativity these days. He's like the sooner you accept that reality, is the sooner that all the all the things that you allegedly want can come into fruition. Yeah. And do you think that the genius of really truly great artists is that they can jump around and express themselves through different lenses? I uh, do. Uh, I'm, that's a fucking totally loaded question because I know my answer. But yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I what's get, your what's your take on my thing? I suppose is the best way to do it. Uh, I guess like I think there's you've got commercial artists. So like any kind of like art where you want to have either people looking at it who aren't art people, or you want to have people who have money enjoying it, and therefore they'll give you money. 
I think that there needs to be some sort of repetition and there's got to be like some sort of grind that you don't want to do. But then I think if you want any kind of longevity, you need constant reinvention. Mm. I love the grind. Mm. I think the grind is one of the most underrated facets of human existence. Why? <sighs> Good question. Oh, the very easy, simple answer. And I've talked about this on the podcast before. There's a there's a there's a uh, a story um, in Greek mythology uh, about Cephasus, and <laughs> it's all around him pushing the rock up the hill. And I can't remember. It's Camus. I think it's Camus who d- did a, wrote an essay on it. And basically, he's it was he used it as a as a metaphor for human existence and he's one of the existentialists and he's like basically he explained it through the lens of it feels like the grind pushing it up the hill but it's the actual the beauty of walking back down the hill to go collect that rock and push it all the way up for people who don't know the myth of syphysis he's destined to consistently walk up walk a rock up a hill and then for it to or for eternity for it to roll the other side down so you have to push it all the way up and the way Camus kind of explained it is that there is this brief moment of joy in the job done and it exists between watching, getting it to the top and then watching, uh, you know, some people see the futility in it because he has to go do it again. But there's this moment of pure, unadulterated joy and where he can just be who he is whilst he walks down the mountain knowing what he's just achieved. That's the point. Ooh. That's what we're going for and this is where the beauty is found. And, you know, you, you cannot get to that point without grinding up the fucking hill. You cannot get it without the grind. You cannot do it without the hard work. You cannot do it without the thankless moments, without the the brutality, without the senselessness to it. And and, and if you can engage with that and just kind of achieve those moments, then they, there are peaks. There are these moments these, these, you can peek through the veil and kind of go, oh, right, this is what we're here for. We're here for these moments, but you can only get there. If you sit around kicking the rock and complaining – Rather than walking so it up the hill, you're fucked. And some people do get there without the grain. Then would you suggest do that, they? that um, yeah, fucking for real, like viral YouTube blings that just people just get famous, rich and famous overnight. Lil Yachty, Lil Yachty blew up. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, okay, do you think? Yeah. But there's a sustainability in that. It would take a very deep thinking, like introvertly, um, to sort of realize that. I'm fucking nothing and I still have to work really hard. Like, because you still have around. to work hard for that second I, that, that's album. A, that's, a, that's a better better mindset to come from, I think. Like, tw- t- t- 10 times out of 10. Yeah. Is, is that like more like, ah, I'm a piece of shit and I only got here because I worked hard. Not like, which is because the flip side of that is like, oh, my natural talent got me here. And yeah, oh, man, that's a trap. Yeah, yeah no, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. not just a trap, but they, their way lies death. It's, um, you know, like, but and like in the industry that we're in, it's you know, yeah, you know, getting getting the first bar off the ground, and even even other businesses to this day, it's like a minefield of all these things that have to come together. It's like a fucking jigsaw puzzle to get the doors open somewhere. There's like so many things have to f- like happen the right way, or be you know, I'll be pushed, or you can work to make these things happen. But there's a sea of things that all have to happen. You know, like whether it's council, whether it's DA, whether it's planning whether it's what that da says whether it's like who, what's, what's the, the grind what's the rules of the plan of that suburb right now for like there's all these little bits and pieces before you, you can't just go like i want that one it's yeah. the grind I've got the and money and what luck. what's the equivalent of yeah, like i guess the internet star like the the overnight blow up we had in, it in, 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 our the, industry. in the hospitality we had it we opened a bar and within two weeks we fucking had lines out the door and they've never stopped. Wh- which bar was that? Mary's in town. Yeah, and now we've got fucking true you know that. venues are in two different states and shout out to our friends but in still, Melbourne who, like, who who are shut down at the moment. But that's that. That's but, that. But, but like that's the idea of overnight success. Yeah, when we'd right. worked in the industry for ten years. Yeah. Yes. and we've been we've been scrambling for like out. two years trying to convince people to give us money to do something. Yeah, See, so I, it's I, that, I that idea of the overnight success. success. Like they just blew up and it's like, are oh, they been gigging for like ten years around but, town? Like, but is there is there an equivalent of like say like you know like Bad Baby you know like that Catch Me Outside girl who becomes a rapper and gets in like our fifteen industry? million followers overnight? Yeah, like well. You know, I, 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 there's there's people there's there's internet cook sensations, uh, you know, who it can be created, but it's got to there's got to be someone above it with money, like you know what I mean? Yeah, like you right, could create right, right. you could create a chef 
name tomorrow, but there's someone behind him who's just Jamie spent Oliver's. Million dollars Jamie into Oliver's it. kind of he, you know, he he'd obviously worked for a few <coughs> years before he got kind of talent spotted. You know, but oh, oh, yeah. I, I worked with his manager actually for a little minute. Yeah, but he he was a sous chef. At, well, yeah, he's not famous for being. A sh- he's not ever been famous for having a good restaurant or being a great chef. Mm. He was just they thought he, he, he had, pretty thought he had a little something, something, something. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. I think he was, a, he was he in the background lisp. and he wrote a Vespa. Odd yeah. choice for talent, I find. Like, <laughs> yeah, Jamie Oliver. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's got like fifty-five fucking kids. Fucking Mormon cunt. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> just too many. <laughs> it's too many fucking kids. Be socially responsible, you fucker. It's too many, too many. Dude, like, seriously, put your dick away. That's <laughs> too many. It's a poor wife. <laughs> like, how many kids has he got now? Seriously, like uh, nearly 10, I think. You that's reckon? F- yeah, I'm not joking. He's got so many children. He doesn't deserve no, that. Many. Four. He's like Richard Branson. No, he but like Richard Branson says, like, Necker Island, every time he had a, a number one hit and Virgin Records, he would, like, build another property on the island. Maybe Jimmy Oliver just has a kid for every line of pans that come <laughs> out or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a little every every, every ingredient he doesn't <laughs> include in the next cookbook, he's like, okay, now it's one ingredient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going like, to come down. Ah. At the, at the end of days, he's just going to cook all his children. Exactly. And he's like, welcome to the world, Jamie Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's your little Jamie Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah, po- yeah, yeah. Jamie Jr. Here, poppy bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fucking cook the shit out of you. <laughs> God. Yeah, I know. It's fucking weird. But fucking. Uh, so, like, we're here in 2020. Hell and yeah. what's next steps for you knowing, like, because you, you do seem like a very well put together human who's aware of, yeah, their impact on what's happening online and you've got a global following of people. Um, but what's your sense of what's next? And I'm not talking about what's the trendy thing, but what's next for you? Where, where, where are you naturally getting inspiration from? From the same place I used to get it from a kid, uh, which is cartoons. Like, I fucking love cartoons, uh, which I guess comes as no surprise. But um yeah, so I've recently started an animation studio, which is pretty pretty Sick. fun. Yeah, so um cool. and we're making our first ever animated series. Now that's a real really? job, isn't it? Yeah, that's a real job. Well that. basically, yeah, to answer the question, and I guess it ties into what we were talking about before, is 100%. Like, yeah, the fickleness of social media. Yeah, it's like building a building a fucking <coughs> hotel on a volcano. Yeah. It's like you don't know if that's just gonna <laughs> rub. <laughs> like 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 it's just like I uh, just it's probably why I'm envious of like people like yourselves, because I'm like, Oh, you guys got a real job, you got a real business. And I'm like, I want a real job, I want a real business. And uh, for me, it was. That's why we started a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to cancel. We want, a, we want a little bit of that fucking fake business. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, though, right? That's funny. Um, yeah, no, I totally get it. Um, yeah, well, I guess like for me, it was like I'm like, all right, where does everybody? Okay, so I was like, basically, did like a, you know, how you did like an audit. You know, yeah. like sometimes yeah. it's like a Sunday SWAT morning. Analysis yeah, and yeah, <laughs> of your life. Like, yeah, like straight up, bro. <laughs> and I was like, all right, who's everybody that I've ever admired in this world? And I'm like, after I wrote them out, I'm like, what's the common link? And I'm like, every one of them was a showrunner for a big animated show. Yeah. And I was like, ah, uh, okay. I think I, I, I see what I like. And so I was like, well, it's about time I made one. So yeah, me, my, me and a few friends, we've put together like an animated show. We're currently animating it. Yeah. Wow, and yeah. I say when I say that's a real job, just because I imagine that's there's a lot of work in that, especially if you no. if you is it is it hand illustrating or like is it going moving to digital or how it? Oh, uh, that's a process. Uh, the the process is because that's a that's a hard question to answer. Like, um, answer. Give it your best shot, big boy. I'll, I'll <laughs> give it. I'll give it my best shot. Um, I mean, like everything that is a drawn element has to be drawn by hand. Yeah. Like technically, like because I mean computers can't draw. Yes, but the certain movements in between and tween frames and that sort of stuff can be done digitally. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's like a hybrid, which is, I guess... What's what the... What, just out of, like, cause coming yeah. from it from a com- totally. both of complete outsiders, what's the percentage of... Obviously, yeah, you know, the idea of, a, you know, computers <laughs> can't create a concept or yeah. a character, but what's the percentage when, it, you know, you get like a, you know, 20 fucking minute episode of Rick and Morty? Yeah. Right? How much of that is hand-drawn and how much of that is... Of, of yeah, digital yeah, 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 transitions. Yeah. Okay, so so it, Rick, Rick and Morty's a good example because that's high end. That's like that's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best end. cartoon high in the world end, right now. High end TV, right? And so like Rick and Morty is made in a program called Tone Boom. I am fairly certain. 
I, I'm sue like, him. I'm like, sue him if he's wrong. Ninety five percent sure it's made in Tomb Boom. I know. I feel like I've read that somewhere. A lot. A lot of things are made in Tomb Boom, like at that level, yeah. which is this program. And the sort of brilliant part of it is you can do like something like you can have your two D as three D shapes and all that sort of stuff. But like Rick and Morty would be. I mean, they'd have their character design. It's not cell animation like early Simpsons or like Disney and so that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it'd be done digitally and you'd just have your characters basically like having their start frames and then their mids and then they'd find their ends and yeah. that sort of stuff. And then you have a lip sync department who's doing all your mouth and your face and that sort of movement. And then you have a background department putting in the backgrounds and they'd be animating the backgrounds. And I mean, it's it almost comes together just like, I mean, Rick, Rick and Morty's like just, Fuck tons of artwork, right? Yeah, it's just artwork stitched together. So much creative art, and like you, you look at something like Rick and Morty or like Family Guy. I find is a really interesting example for this because it's like it's two D stuff is kind of simplistic, but then the action scenes from say Family Guy, and this is from Family Guy from the start, are so ridiculously complex, and so they would have their own own department just basically be like, all right, here's the choreographed scene of like yeah, fighting or whatever movement, it is. Yeah. And it's like, you go do that. The chicken fight. Yeah, yeah, a chicken fight. Perfect example. Whereas then you've got like, say, South Park where it's like, you know, they, they make an episode in a week. I don't know if you've ever seen that documentary, Six Days to Air. No. Yeah. Dude, that shit's worth a watch. Is it's it on, on Netflix? YouTube. No, it's on YouTube. Okay, cool. Yeah. All, all, on, all about South Park? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's it's basically about um yeah, them making an episode in one week and how quickly they can animate it. I just yeah. started them. Um, where, where is, oh, oh, sorry, I'll just, Give no, you no, like co- context, like a, say like an episode of Futurama that'll take you nine months. An episode, yeah, one episode, yeah, and Shut like say like up. Family Guy, you know that that kind of thing. Like you're putting multi millions of dollars into one episode, so like like just to accentuate just how yeah. good, how incredible South Park is from like a technical point of view. Fucking hell. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. What were no, you no, say? I was just gonna say I started fucking with like uh, uh, THC oils recently, and like for the first time found South Park hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you never liked it before. Nah, I didn't get it. Ah. I thought it was. I thought it was just so obvious, and uh, and and attention grabbing. I never really got Such it. A hipster. No, <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. Fucking guy. I'm, not, I'm it's an like anti, the greatest animated hipster. show of all time. Yeah, yeah. I'm but were you not like 12 when it came out? Or younger? Oh, like, you would have been there through that. Fuck you. Epi- like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, era. I, I like, Kenny. Yeah, yeah. The, um, you chocolate, bastard. The chocolate salty boy. Yeah. Like, 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 exactly. Seasons it was one all, through eight. It was all like, all like pop culture. It was, were they creating their own pop culture references? The genius I can see as a 38 year old is that they created pop culture references. That's a very difficult thing to do. That's I used an to get extremely it all the time difficult of thing to Kenny, do. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? And to my credit, people say it to I your face like it was hilarious. Maybe, You're like, it's not hilarious. Like, when, when people I'm not even be the grump of it. When, when, you reckon I've never heard this? <laughs> yeah. like, when people are like, "What do you put your longevity down to?" I've never said I killed Kenny to Kenny ever. <laughs> I've never made <laughs> that joke. I never got it. I never liked it, and that's why we were. That's why we buds. <laughs> Well, thanks South Park for our fucking on and during friendship. <laughs> oh man! But it's a, it's an. I tell you, what's been very interesting to me is watching the rise of cartoons as a very potent, um, pol- like socio, socio. I won't say political, or just socio. socio- well, they push the boundaries so much further. I oh, think it's, it's been because so there's good. no one, behind, there's no name attached yeah, to those words. No one to blame. Scene. It's yeah. so good, man. And it's like it's so abstract, and you're already in this weird world where you're just like sucked into the fact that like I guess I could be any character because nothing really looks like me. And it was tickled by obviously started by The Simpsons, you know, and then mm. taken. To, to well, you're the fucking oh no 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 I'd say like, like 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 yeah like the the Simpsons definitely fucking mainstreamed that shit yeah 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 and you know, used to be now offensive when it came out you remember if it's I, man I tell you I watched it with my they kid brought out that album and my my oh, it came out must have been like eight or nine I was going to get the Simpsons album. you mean two yeah. yeah. no, it was um, ninety three right it? yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My, 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 um, my parents were like oh, I'm not sure like let's go Simpsons is offensive and I was like no it's not I still I think I still remember the fucking Bart Simpson rap. Do the Bart Man. Yeah. <laughs> From Sam. Remember the, to chor- the chorus? Yeah. Some of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all those kind of beats. Like everyone was bringing a hip hop album. Shaq. Some, if in the <laughs> some point in the next half an hour, I would just start fucking doing a Bart Simpson rap. <laughs> it's because it's finally clicked in my fucking. I just said, I I'm it. Bart yeah. Daniels because yeah. I, I was about to do the I'm Jack Daniels from the fucking drinking song. Um, uh. But. Look, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. it's an interesting thing, I think, that where society gets to a point where it's 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 created it, like the world of friends became so ridiculous 
and and then we had reality TV because that wasn't ridiculous the enough. Strike. Yeah, and then and then, then you know they our, our regular television became so unbelievable that cartoons are a closer representation to life than real life, which I, is a fucking mind bending idea. That's whack. It's, it's, it's so it's so weird, like, the role that, like, cartoons play. I have more in common with fucking Rick and Morty than I do with fucking Real Housewives of the of Hollywood. <laughs> like, like, Oz. Like, and, and I think everyone does. Yeah, man. Yeah, who, actually, like, who is the cartoon character that you feel like you relate to the most? That's a great question. Probably um, Rick Sanchez. You know, like, we're talking about him. But honestly, yeah. like, he's he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And he plays life by his own rules. I, I probably would pull back from his. He's he's not really a, mis- a misanthrope. He's, I think that he's a, a eternal optimist. When I look at it, he's always, you know, whilst he's willing to wor- burn the world down, it's there for a greater reason. There's always something else going on. We're going to rescue this to maintain this, and I like that about. I think that's that's the kind of genius of the. You know, you he might they might set the entire world on fire. And, and it looks self-serving, but ultimately he's there always trying to fucking save Morty and the family. And the he might hate the family, the nuclear family, but ultimately there's this, there's the consistent thing that he saves, which is the nuclear family. And it's a very interesting thing because right now we're having, you know, society is trying to dismantle that. And it's, we've got cartoons that are like literally willing to set whole worlds and universes on fire. But, and, the, and he's framed as this, misanthropic, disillusioned, disconnected genius, but ultimately he always ends up eating breakfast with his family who he resents and and hates and challenges him for very human reasons. This is a very, you know, like I think that that's kind of one of the things that people resonate with. You know, it's very fun to watch Pickle Rick. (laughs) You know, it's really fun, but ultimately there's something, ultimately he ends up at breakfast. Oh, dude, you you can't make a a modern animated show without... Without like chucking in all the real shit. I mean, it's why I don't know if you saw Hoops. I started watching. I didn't. I haven't gotten yeah, into it well, yet. Dude, the reviews of Hoops was so fucking bad, and that's because there was no emotional depth. There was like one one character because they're Maddie. trying to do all the outrage with all, none of the all they were trying to connection. do was yeah, it was just a gag show, and it's it, like watching an Adam Sandler film, <laughs> like straight up. And like man, like I fucking love an Adam Sandler film in the right mood, right? But like, I mean, it was. I think it's now that animation has sort of set a name for itself with so many purists and so many people being like, nah, you need complicated characters and stories and blah, 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 amongst your gags. Honestly, I think it was, I blame Big Mouth, which I think is one of the greatest shows of all time. But yeah, I think that's the reason. What about you, Kenny? What about you? Which which character I don't know. do you relate I, I to the most? Are you going to hate me? I haven't watched a lot of these new... No, okay, okay, okay. okay take it out of cartoon world. Any fictional <laughs> character that, 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 that you relate to. Who asked you, cunt? I, don't know. <laughs> I was just <laughs> asking Kristen our podcast. I was going to suggest whatever, <laughs> whatever's the, the love this place. The, the, you whatever the character, whatever one Jake said, whatever one that um sort of l- listens to all his rants about wanting to watch Morty. the world, the world Morty. burn and then bring him back down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> you're Morty, you're Rick, you're Morty. I fucking love that. Answer. Oh, that's good, man. That's good. I'm probably squanchy in the middle. Squanchy. <laughs> 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 I haven't watched a lot of them. I watched a bit of the uh, what's the uh, is it Bojack? The, the oh, Bojack, yeah, we yeah, will yeah. on that. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Bojack's good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. It's some of the smartest shit. Out. It's some of the oh, funniest yeah, yeah, shit. Out. Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. leaps it's and bones ahead of. I mean, yeah. I don't know what like you know true real life character comedies are pushing any sort of real form of boundaries at the moment, especially. But they won't because like, like we said, there's, they're too afraid of. You know, no one wants to attach their name to being that. You know, probably Ricky Gervais is. The closest, and he's not even that offensive. He just sort of he gets labelled as that guy, yeah, but just because he rips the yeah. piss out of Hollywood. But I like F is for family just because of Bill Burr. I love Bill Burr. I didn't. I didn't like how he translated into cartoon. I will say. I like. I like the vulnerability that he's showing. He's giving us an insight into what his family was like. Yeah, I he's agree, setting yeah. it in his time in the time that he grew up. Yeah, you don't know. Wh- he, you know, you can tell that the children are an amalgam of his experience, and you can mm. tell that his father. Is an amalgam of uh, of all the fathers fathers that he witnessed, and also probably of what he the fears that he has of being a dad, yeah. as in a, in the in the in the modern way. And I like the level of vulnerability that he shows in it. You know when you know that that line, shut the fuck up! I'll throw you through a fucking wall. <laughs> it's it's you know it's a language I didn't hear as a as a child, but you know that he did. Yeah. You know it might have been it might have been turbo versioned of it, but 
I like I like how vulnerable he gets on it, and it, it allows the vulnerability he doesn't show any. St- he he could give glimpses of with his stand up. There's a really big um, correlation I think between modern day comic. Uh, comics and and cartoons. I agree. Where they they yeah. they're willing to step into this space of vulnerability, which I think is so desperately lacking in our mainstream conversations. The vulnerability is at the core of all of it. You know, if you if you tell me that Rick and Morty is not a story of you know, you know, human redemption of, of triumph and redemption yeah. and vulnerability, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, you're, you're missing the entire point of the fucking show. I agree with you. Um, and people just like put it down to, oh, you're just a Reddit kid. I'm like, oh no, no, no. You I don't don't even know what a Reddit kid is. I, I don't know. Is I'm a 38 year old man with two kids, and I fucking and it resonates with me in a way that being a fucking 18 year old kid who's hanging out on Reddit ne- it would never have been able to be achieved. I get jokes. You know, it's interesting. I like so to go back on the Simpsons a little bit. Thanks. You know, I, I started, I started um, watching the Simpsons with my kid, and she's seven, and it's entirely inappropriate for her. And I remember my parents banning it from my household no, man, around. What are your parents like? I'm just curious. Yeah, Christians, uh, Pentecostal Christians. Oh, sick. Um, but you know what? I'm not watching it with my kid anymore because there's too much from from season kind of eight, ten onwards. It's so much sex talk. I don't want to have that conversation with her yet. It's you know she's too young for a fucking conversation around sex. Mm. It, there's objectification. I'm not saying like objectification. There's just too much. It's not objectification. It's conversation around sex. She's not. I want to protect that in her. She's seven. She's innocent. She doesn't need to have these conversations. She's got plenty of time for that. And when the time is right for her to have these conversations with me and with my, with her mum, then we will have them. But it's you know she's seven. She should play. But Homer she Simpson's not going to be the catalyst. Yeah, <laughs> for, like, it's, for it's a ridiculous. It's a ridiculous idea. It's and crazy, so, man. Like I've seen like the old Simpsons production art because I get into that sort of shit. And it's like the, there's like this one where it's like how to draw Marge, and it's like Marge should be this, Marge should be this, and then like the final light is sexy even. And I'm yeah. like, like, of course, but she was. I mean, like, you know. She should always be sexy. Yeah. She should, there should be some sort of level of desirability and reality to it. Right, right, right. And, and like, I guess Homer's desirability is, like, you know, his big heart, which underlines everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, that he really does want to be a better man. And it's, 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 it's fucking interesting. I was like, oh, yeah, no, like, I guess they, they kind of played into that. Well, that, I think, you know, that's, it, it hallmarks the intelligence of the entire show. Oh, it's, 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 it's classic for It's been yeah. through it. There's the run through. But the, the, the point that, you know, I mm. think I'm, I was trying to make there is like at 25, I would have been firmly in the camp that every child should be able to watch The Simpsons. But at 38 with a fucking seven-year-old, I am I have a knowledge to it and an understanding of the jokes and I have an understanding of its framework and its context where it's changed again. And... Th- that to me is obviously a sign of a very intelligent show and a really fucking wise show. It's also a sign that you cannot fucking know everything at age X or Y. And that, you know, it's it, it, if the fact that it can be a movable feast and, and continue to be enjoyed over multiple generations and multi- and my lifetime, in t- when I was 12 and I used to sneak it on, my parents went around. I didn't get any of the jokes. My daughter doesn't get any of the jokes. She doesn't understand what's going on. But my head's going, tick, 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 and I'm thinking about it from a different perspective. I think it's just a, it's a wild world where, you know, like I said, where cartoons represent life over, over generations in a, in a way that, you know, idiot TV this just is incapable of. It's crazy how The Simpsons have sort of, I don't know, maybe not kept up is the word, but it's still getting made. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, if there was a, you know, if they were probably number one for like decades, and now it's like maybe they're sitting at number 78 on the charts, whatever it is, but it's still, no, they're not gonna giving still up fun 78. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're still, it's still getting made, even though it's surely it just seems, you know, it's just flailing were about your in the parent, background. Were, were your parents pro or anti Simpsons? Well, it's, I tell you, for. Well, who were your parents? <laughs> <laughs> Marion and George. <laughs> we, I didn't see it till. Probably quite later because you didn't get it until you got um, like satellite television, which was it's called Foxtel here, Sky, same shit, Sky in the UK. Right. So it wasn't so on any. Guys, you guys didn't have it on free to air. No, no, but it came later. But it came. I mean, I'm talking probably early '90s when Sky whatever came out. But oh, then, wait, but how, you had to have satellite. What, what year were you born? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. And you? Ninety. Yeah. So it was. It was. So it was. It was out, and it'd been out, and I knew about it. 
But until you got satellite TV, it was on Sky One. When did you and click in? Because I remember The Simpsons coming out. Oh, d- when I did mean, you discover it? I'm the same, a- I'm the you same s- age as The Simpsons. So but when did you fall over it? When uh, did you discover I think it? I, I su- uh, like it would have been on the entire time. Like yeah. I, I yeah, like it definitely would have been on in our house. So it's yeah. like Sesame Street kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, you straight, grew up, up, straight up. That was that was the babysitter. Yeah, we were uh, a friend of mine. We're a TV family. <laughs> a friend of mine, um, Jake and Jake knows him. We're a um, Jesus family. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a friend of mine is. I met him here. He's an Irish fellow. Now he's in Canada. He married this uh, beautiful American woman. She's an actress, and she for but for years she had a podcast with Nancy Cartwright. No way. And it was like the classic the the classic recipe for a podcast: true crime. There's like. Two gal pals, like best mates. So I don't, um, probably thirty years between them, whatever. But it's like the, there was there was the thing, and then there was cool. some something like I don't know. I just remember seeing Adam online being like, not saying fuck that, bit, but it's like there'd be a massive falling out, and it all just stopped straight away. And then I found out recently that um, Nancy Cartwright is heavily into the old Scientology. Oh really? And maybe I'm putting two and two together and getting five, but I was just like, surely that creates. If you're not in that world, surely at some point it would create a, fr- a friction. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking out of line. So Adam, if you watch, we're going to get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope we get a cease and desist. Well, I listened to fucking it. idiots at Scientology. It was <laughs> what was I listened to last week? It was his. Well, I can't remember. Oh, was it, I think it was Joe Rogan with Leah Romini, like the uh, yeah, the, yeah. the most outspoken one. She's just like. She's just dropping it on everyone. She's like, I'm not saying things. That's why I was like, there are, there are all these like, you know, uh, laws or rules or processes or whatever they're called. She's like telling, naming all the numbers of them. She's like, this shit exists. You can look it up. That's why I keep saying what number of like idea that was because it exists. So it's go a look deep it up. Well, huh? She was at that guy. Who's the guy from the 70s show? It's in uh, court for rape. Oh, the um, Danny uh, something Neil, Danny, uh, something, yeah. the Francis from Malcolm in the ba- Middle's brother, right? It's the guy from that seventy show yeah, 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 and he's yeah, in yeah, the yeah, ranch he's got, thing. He's got the fucking glasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. he's in Scientology. He's heavily in Scientology. He's got the same lawyer as Michael Jackson had. Danny McMaster. Lawyer. Yeah, something like that. Same lawyer as Michael Jackson had in the child abuse cases, <laughs> and like Leah Romini just turned up at his court That's case to be like, "Fuck you!" Yeah. Just looking at me like. <laughs> We're gonna fucking get it. Man, She's like, fuck, this, fuck they're like, famous. They're like, you got any start? Any any quote? Is there anything to say? She's like, this is just the start. <laughs> fucking hell. So we're talking a lot about nostalgic shit, and it's one of the things that I think has been re- so resonate. It resonates about. Or it's what caught our attention to you, like four or five years ago, when we, we when we kind of stumbled over Struthless on Instagram, and it was this strange little interplay between. Nostalgia for the nineties and early two thousands, and then this, this this almost nostalgic take on on current day trend. So you know, like you, well, one minute you'd be talking about slap bands, the next minute you'd be talking about fidget spinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like, what role does nostalgia play for you? Um, and like, is it the driving thing, or is it the the just the lens through which you direct thought? Like, how's it? I think it's it's a connection to my past before a certain time. I once again don't want to hit you with the heavy shit, but please like, do no, don't, oh, please. Well, this well, is some, what it's some, all about. Some pretty gnarly shit happened to me when I was about fifteen, and so like I feel like all my nostalgia pretty much goes before that. Yeah, right. Um, and then and so I feel like subconsciously what's going on is me being like, all right. Yeah, like that's when life was good, right? And yeah. and I probably just end up projecting that onto the internet and then maybe just people resonate with it. But yeah, that would be from like pretty much 1990 to 2005, which I think is like roughly the period that I tend to glorify. The, yeah. the idea of the glorifying past to celebrate where we are, mm. I think is a, is a, is a pretty consistent theme with, with anything like – it's not with anything, but it's there's an acknowledgement of the f- of you, we need an acknowledgement of the past to get where we are to of make course. sense of where we are right now, and then hundred percent. When to, in order to make sense of the future, we need to acknowledge our present and our and our past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, Which, you're guessing. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't I don't know if you've thought too much about it, um, but is that is that something that you you're you're being cognitive of when you're doing creating this art. Or? I don't know. I think it. I think it's more instinctual, right? Because it's like like I, I 
I think the way that you see all creativity is the creativity that came before you because I, I, f- I feel like it might even go even before that. Like, I don't know if you guys had that, like, high school boy phase where you were just like, oh, my God, I just discovered 70s punk. Oh, my God, I just yeah, discovered, I discovered it. Yeah, I just discovered it. I'm responsible yeah, for it. Like, li- literally, like, I'm, I'm fucking <coughs> Indiana Jones right now, you know, oh, like, you know, oh, here's, like, the Ramones. 60s new wave. And then, like, you know, it's, it's kind of everything. And then you're like, oh, my God, here's Kung Fu Cinema or here's Blank or here's Blank or here's, like, you know, early Japanese anime or, like, whatever it is. And then, like, you start digging up and you're like, oh, this, like, I, I feel like history is the only context to understand anything. And I definitely look at things with, like, probably a lens of pop culture. But then, obviously, if you go out wider culturally, then you, like, you know, you start to see things. Then you go out wider human naturally. And then you're like, okay, so 6,000 years ago, we had, like, civilization and then blah, 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 blah. Then you can just, like, dial it back. So I guess, like, nostalgia is more like, I don't know, I'd prefer to use the word context. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe that was yeah, a little bit a little bit high. <laughs> well, if you look at the, you know, I like you it. know that sort of that that map through time. Like most things are probably ha- like there's probably an episode of The Simpsons that happened in Roman times. You know, what I mean, like the the, the same story. <laughs> like, oh, but, but but like like straight up, it's some yeah. Joseph Campbell shit. You know, like yeah, where it's like all right, like the Minotaur. Who's Joseph Campbell? Sorry. Just oh, oh he was uh, he was an American scholar who wrote like all these uh, books. But the, the probably the book that he's quite most quoted on is called uh, the the Power of Myth. Is that it? Um, where he talked about like how religion is declining in modern society, but the myth and the myth that communicated religion to like say a pre literate world yeah. are still being told. Yeah. So if you've got like things like the hero's journey, which you might get from like say Jesus, Jung or, talks a lot about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you might get it's like very young in your day. yeah, yeah. Certain prophets who like you know follow like. Greek myths or the hero's journey or whatever. And he's like, yeah, we're still getting that in, you know, the form of Star Wars and the Matrix. Yeah. But, I mean, the Matrix was a little bit before his time. But Star Wars was right on time for Joseph Campbell. And, yeah, then, yeah he'd basically say, he's like, oh, no, no, we're still getting the dose of, of how we should behave and the role models that we've got. And they're still coming fictionally, but, yeah. Yeah, this is the, the idea, I think Jung talks about the archetypes, you know, like mm. the, we've got these certain archetypes in the world you know, and part of, you know, one of the most interesting things, and I know that this person, this name is going to probably trigger some people or the 16 people who listen to this, but Jordan Peterson talks <gasps> a lot about, yeah, <laughs> He talks a lot about in his in his lecture series around oh my God. <laughs> where his commentary. Yeah, no, his uh, commentary um, around uh, Jungian archetypes. He, he does this whole thing through the lens of Pinocchio, um, and it's a really interesting thing because he's doing it strictly. There's no commentary. That, that's the story of morality. Yeah, yeah, and he, he 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 extracts Jung Jungian ideas through the lens of Disney films, whether it be you know um, yeah, Pinocchio or or uh, the Lion King is another famous one that he does, and it's a very interesting thing just to just to actually instruct his psychology students around Jung, which is a very clever. Forget about anything he said that's controversial. That's not what we're fucking getting into. But just the idea that he can extract. You, you, these archetypes from these classical, um, well, now n- nouveau classical, neoclassical um, uh, storytelling um, devices and narratives, which is really interesting because it, all he's trying to show is the fact that they're timeless and that they they they're shown themselves in in the in the in the Greek myths and they're reflected in our Disney myths, okay. and it's a very powerful thing to watch. Because it's it's just a commentary on what human nature is that that Jung explored, um, which you know I don't know where I'm sitting with. I'm no, not a no, scholar, but it's an inter- interesting story because like, obviously he like defies Geppetto and then goes to Pleasure Island and indulges in his hedonism, right? Which is cool, and then it, like he meets like Lampwick and does all like the yeah. And shit. there's so many biblical, tr- the, you know, the, he he I think and he even gets swallowed by a whale like Jonah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and it's all – and then – but it's, and it's – you know, Gepe- he actually ends up rescuing Geppetto. Yeah. You know, so it's this this son, this pariah kind of figure who kind of gets cast out and, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. People should go listen to those lectures and, and not get sidetracked by the clickbait that surrounds – the name of Jordan Peterson, but it, because if you just Jordan just Peterson <laughs> destroys feminism, <laughs> <laughs> destroys your YouTube algorithm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't fucking watch too many, otherwise you're going to end up listening to fucking some far right bullshit. Nice. Um, but and if you do, just balance it with some far left bullshit, and you'll realize <laughs> that they're all fucking barking mad. <laughs> they're all fucking barking mad. But it's a really interesting thing when you look at the role of comedy. I mean, we're talking about. Uh, Pinocchio, 
you know, which is some of the oldest animation, you know, and then we've got the new wave of animation yeah, that, you know, w- w- like it or not, there was a there was a line in the sand drawn before we've seen old Disney and then, you know, um, the Little Mermaid and then Lion King kind of version. Disney Renaissance. And then we had Toy Story, which is a, Pixar, the, the, digital, <laughs> the digital version. Thanks, Steve Jobs. Fucking proper genius. <laughs> it's proper genius. But you know the the <laughs> things that picks are on the side. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, right, yeah. right. I fucking think about that every fucking time I look at my laptop. Oh. He's a legit. <laughs> he's a legit genius about time. Oh my god! Yes. But but there's these stages. But what doesn't change is the story. What doesn't change ever mm. is these archetypical stories of and it, you know you can see it played out in um yeah. in, in 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 Family Guy and and uh, uh, Rick and Morty to this day. The these they're all playing with these themes that are so familiar and yeah. tapping into them is kind of the genius, but it's also so obvious when you can kind of look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's always the same thing. It's yeah, the person called to adventure and then like, yeah, he goes through, he defeats the beast and then comes back transformed, having changed. And, then, and yeah. is it, is it those storylines that appeal to you so deeply in, in nerd world, like in cartoon nerd world, uh, you as a, I, I, I don't you yeah, mean yeah. that no, 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 in no, any no. D- disrespectful no, way. Dude, I, I fucking so rock it. Nerd. I rock it. Like I, I love, I love comic cons and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not meaning in, in any disrespectful way, but is I mean, that, I, I rock it. Yeah. Is that, um, is that part of the appeal that it's something so familiar, or is it like the the, the tech side of things that Ooh. rock you harder? Nah, definitely, definitely story and character and all that sort of stuff. So like, oh, I I would say like the thing that excites me about nerd world is the fact that everybody else in there is a nerd, and you know that what all a nerd is is a fan. Like all, mm. like all they are is someone who sees something and just goes, "Oh my fucking god!" And they really think about what it would have taken to make that, and then they mm. empathize with you know the, the actual creation process, and then they just like try think about a certain piece of like fiction in the same way that the creator would have thought about a certain piece of fiction. Yeah, and which is exactly what a creator wants when they make fiction, right? And so I guess that that's what nerd world is. It's just a bunch of fucking people who like think deeply about the world that isn't our own, but would still have like some sort of, um, I don't know, moral, moral like uh, nugget to, 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 to juice. Yeah. And that, that would be nerd world. Something quite childlike about it. Cause it's, you know, when you're a kid, it's yeah. like, it's shameless just consumption, like whatever it is, you, just, you cannot get enough of whatever, like whether it's a cartoon or a, Sport, mm. whatever the fuck it is, it's like it consumes you at every moment of your time. You cannot get enough. What like, was your favorite when you were a kid? I oh, like WWF, like the wrestling shit. I oh was fuck, Dude, all the so, figures. So that's super interesting because that is so. Reality. But but like, oh, uh, so I was talking to, and this is going to sound like a name drop, but like, I just more want to credit him for giving me this idea. It was Briggs the other day, and he was mm-hmm. saying that like we're pestering him to get on the podcast. I'm going to just make a clip about this. <laughs> Briggs, come on the podcast. <laughs> uh, you know I love you, Briggsy. Um, anyway, so like, yeah, he was because he's he's uh, I guess between all of us, he's nineteen eighty four was when he was born, or I feel like eighty four. Oh, a little youngin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sprout. <laughs> anyway, but like, like, like the wrestling and all the Vin- yeah Vince McMahon yeah. shit, like that. That's his thing, and he was just like his whole take on it. He's like, that's the syrup of entertainment. Like that is the concentrated sugar of all the things that you ever wanted from like a sitcom, a fucking soap <laughs> opera, a drama, <laughs> yeah. reality TV, yeah. superhero shit. A little bit it's, of violence. That's what, and it's just condensed there's into an ar- this like, oh, there's this argument so that that's why Donald Trump got fucking voted in. Oh, why the fuck wouldn't you if this fucking entertaining clown just it's comes K-fade, out? It's kayfabe, right? Yeah, no, baby. It's this idea of like, uh, of, of, of a, a, a reality that we all know doesn't <laughs> exist that we're all going to pretend that it does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If like, fuck, it's uh, 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 there was another thing that you only got when you um if you got satellite television. One of my best pals, his brother, won a competition. So he was one of the first people in our town to, uh, from his town, like two thousand people. What's the town called? Um, Ochterada. Ochterada. Oh, oh, <laughs> And um, he was one of the first to get it. it must be in like late eighties. And I used to go and stay at the house and we'd stay when the like summer slam all that shit was on, we'd go and stay at his house and we'd just stay up till like two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it finishes at ten o'clock and everyone fuck off to bed and we just like stay up all night. Yeah. Full of like off the fucking couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give him the check. Like, yeah. Loving it. Like I was I was so upset. Get, with my daughter gave me the people's over oh. the other day direct in the sternum. Fuck. Killed me. She <laughs> loves Jumanji. She's fucking thanks to the rock. She's like Bang! That, that meme that was going about when his family got COVID about you know, they found out they had it when they they couldn't smell what the rock was cooking. It was very, <laughs> very funny. 
didn't see that. I saw that he got the COVID. They couldn't smell what the rock was. <laughs> I know, but Petita Advocate did it, but I think it was pretty. I think it was pretty global. That's it was pretty like, good. Yeah, tight, it tight, a, tight, yeah. tight. It's tight. unlikely one person's going to come up with that joke. Yeah, yeah. better better minds than mine, though. <laughs> better minds. But uh, than mine. yeah, I think at the time, and I would refuse to believe that it wasn't. Like he kind of knew, but you would argue, it's like it's not real. And we're like it's real. Like yeah. it's, you know, it's like well, it's probably a little bit, but it's like no one knows who's going to win. Like it's still. Of course, it's all completely scripted, but it's, it's fucking. To turn the I, lens I on you, I actually can't believe it's still as huge as it is because yeah. in this world where you know reality really? TV is taken over and people just want the real, even though it's fake, as fake as that shit is, to have something is there's no scripted less and, and theater esque in a sports entertainment thing. I'm still surprised it's still so fucking huge, but it's probably I don't know. Maybe just I'm as surprised big. it's not. Bigger. Really? I'm surprised that people don't call out the MMA for being just a fucking slightly more realistic. <laughs> like ultimately, the stakes are well, when they get in the it. ring. No, when they get in the ring, it's as realistic. But re- like the, what's around it is it's just. Up. It's just Conor as McGregor fucking made, made up. Conor McGregor brought that. It's just it's just it. a fake. But five years ago, there you was say like that, you say that much better than we do in our accents. <laughs> 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 Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. So but it's I think before that the. the uh, they were they were, they had no piss, no media yeah. training whatever so you have these two fighters and be like so what have you got to say and they're like nothing <laughs> <laughs> we'll say nothing but then afterwards then the arrogance kicks in because they realize that that's what gave them some money they're going to say I've got to fucking destroy him yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so, so he brought it into that game and now it's even like the Diaz the Diaz guy that he fights fuck that guy's got nothing to say. Bro, which is shit because like then you watch like like back when it was like boxing like Mayweather and shit. Mayweather's like he no he gets yeah. the game, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ah. Oh, boxing's full of it. I was watching boxing's cool. Uh, yeah, boxing's like boxing's at middle ground. I was yeah, telling yeah, yeah, because yeah, you know yeah. Tyson Fury's pretty good at it. And I was telling Jakey we watch we started doing a bit of boxing at the gym. Like in the, we've only started going to gym like uh, in the last year. Yeah, we're both t- about turned forty, so probably quite a bit late, but. Um, but we've really had a, a late in life love and fondness for boxing. Anya. And I was watching all the videos on YouTube and I was like watching the old Prince Nassim Hamed videos and I was like, Jake, he came into the ring on a fucking flying carpet. <laughs> it's like like dressed up like a king or like a prince. <laughs> I tell that video I told you about Prince Nassim Hamid comes into the ring on a flying carpet and then almost got almost got knocked the fuck out that if like for the first time. You can do do away as well. Oh, this is the best part of my fucking podcast. I'll Just for a chatting, top up. It, chatting fucking with Kay Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk about fucking nerd shit. Ice. There's ice here. It's melted as fuck. Yeah. Well, come get it. Yeah. Yeah, well, fucking hurry up. No, you're on my side of the table. You know that in our prenup, it's it. <laughs> you know that on camera we're best mates, but <laughs> off camera we fucking hate each other. Just fucking. Just like, imagine if it just went silent. Imagine if it just went silent. <laughs> like, like this. Mm. I was thinking they don't talk. You, you know they don't talk to each other off camera. I was thinking in the it's in their contract. Like <laughs> at one point, I would just like blow up, like just take something really personally and just blow up at you and then storm out <laughs> and then just come in 30 seconds and go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, the I was joking. Yeah. My dad yeah. must have found the link. He's texting me just going <laughs> 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 Shut up! Literally. <coughs> your dad's creeping on your deep creep. That's oh, amazing. No, what's, he, what's he texting no, you? I'm not sure. Because he's talking about this uh, car and he's like, um, <laughs> I don't know, but then there's a, a thing at the end and it just says, liked the pinheads. I don't know if that was a band, obviously, it played and they're on the podcast. and on They the were. Yeah, they but they also, were the is it a part of a car that I'm not aware Because my dad's very car-y. And uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, this a, p- a part of a car that's got a pinhead. And it's much more likely that he's referencing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking pretty hilarious. It's pretty good. Hey, Big George. Big Georgie. I'm going to fucking Italy. make a little quick clip just for you, Big G. He's in Italy. They went back to Italy for a couple of Fuck, really? Hey, gluttons for punishment. Wow. Well, Italy's they better, fucking than, love better the than the UK now, isn't it? Not better than Scotland, though. Yeah. Well, Scotland's about to get locked down again, so are we? Are they rushing really? back. Are yeah, I think so. I think so. Fuck. Yeah, That's maybe. brutal over there, huh? Mate, they, just <laughs> they love a bit of the COVID. <laughs> I tell you. And, you so know, this, like, this tells one thing. Why do you fucking love the COVID yeah, so yeah. much? <laughs> <laughs> the fact, you know, yeah, I think it's just them um, making up for all the colonisation they've done over the years. Oh, fuck off! Coming. We're I busy. We're doing a podcast, mate. <laughs> no, we're doing a podcast. you got to fuck off. 
Oh, uh, you can sit in. No, I got my fault. It's so good. <coughs> Had to piss like a pregnant woman. Yeah, fuck, man. I, I let it out. Yeah. Like a powerful a horse. Powerful you got to drain that man van. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, you asked us our favourite fucking people, but what what was it that... What what was it that got you fucking? What made you a nerd when you're a kid? Yeah, good question. I think it was um sort of maybe some distracted parenting, like and um, <laughs> that's very meta. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'd I'd say distracted parenting, but there was always a TV. Yeah, and man, I fucking love TV. <laughs> <laughs> How good is it? Oh, dude, it was the titties, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah. And so I just, I just like got sucked into the world of pop culture because I'm like, oh, you're very consistent. It's like, <laughs> it's like the Holy Grail. Like we both got two young kids, and it's like, yeah. but before you pass out in the couch, it's tired, and because we're both getting socially acceptably stoned most nights with these oils, no one knows about it. I love um, the oils. <laughs> <laughs> By the time yeah, you get your kids stone. to bed at like eight thirty nine, it's like. It's like a, such a I'm solace at the seven. end of the day. Be like, right now, I'm gonna watch something with fucking violence, fucking swearing. <laughs> like, I watch ten minutes. Th- and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, right. Right. But or, it's or still so much cartoon that it's just still. Send, I still go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. Nah, but I, what was it for you? Like, what got you on this path to where you are? As far as in pop culture, do you have a? I mean. Like, like, what, what are was, my pillars? What are your touchstones? Oh man, so many. So, like, I guess, like, early life, like for me, it's very hard to go past Pokemon. Like, Pokemon was oh, for real. Oh, dude, I'm the, I am the perfect age demographic. We had a kid who worked for us who looked like Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We called him that. I didn't get the reference because I didn't get into Pokemon, but people were like, oh, he looks like Snorlax. You got a picture of him? Big motherfucker. Have you got a picture of him? Yeah, he commented on an Instagram thing. And, and <laughs> I'll put, it, I'll, I'll I'll put it up on the video. Ding! Jimmy the old chef. Was, I was like, I said it to him. He's he like, like Snorlax. Like, that's such an insult. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little video. Of he does, though. He looks like program. fucking Snorlax. Eating a Mary's oh, oh, <laughs> See? He looks oh. like Snorlax. I'll put this video up. I, I don't know if I, I don't know, I don't know if I want a dragon, but he is eating in that video. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Snorlax. We <laughs> called him Snorlax. He's a beautiful man. We love Snow him. Is he? Snow he, he's a, he was a cornerstone of our kitchen for fucking two years. He's a beautiful human. We love him. Never but he looks like problems. fucking Snorlax. <laughs> like yeah, fuck. Snorlax. Yeah. So, so I guess Pokemon. After that, yeah, like Pokemon. That, that, that's that's ja- at the core. Was but Pokemon Japanese? Uh, yeah, yeah. Anime? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Japanese and then dubbed in English. And that's like what, what the rest of us got. Um, so yeah. did you dig that sort of the Redux recently that was like, became a phenomenon on the... Um, the app thing oh pokemon go yeah. yeah yeah pretty much every dude my age like just <laughs> basically got into that hardcore <laughs> um the dude who actually i'm making every the, dude oh let's take that on back uh, <laughs> i know the dude that i'm making the current cartoon with he got so fucking into it. he's like he's like he won't mind me saying this He's a little bit spectrumy, you know what I'm yes. saying? Like, yeah, and he just gets w- r- wicked into it. God bless his, those yeah. fucking oh, rainbow man, colors. man, dude, I fucking... Uh, That's lo- a spectrum I'm... I love my Rayman business partner, put it that way, man. Like, I fucking adore this cunt. But, like, like holy shit, he got so into Pokemon in such a tunnel vision way. Like, Pokemon <laughs> Go, I mean. Like, when it came back, there was one instance where he literally walks, like, into someone's, like, pretty much into their house to try to catch Shut a up. Pokemon. Shut the fuck up. And they're just like, the fuck are you doing? He's like... Oh. Oh, and then just immediately comes back. <laughs> I love, I I love to see four days. <laughs> yeah. I love to see the statistics of the amount of people who got shot doing that in the United States. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have guns in Australia. They'd just be like, "Get the fuck out Literally. of here!" You might get a bruised ear and a fucking yeah, maybe, babe. maybe a okay. sore jaw. What you doing? And maybe yeah. they'd be yeah. huge, shot in the liver. Probably like seven people got shot playing Pokemon for sure. Fucking, it was like all the fucking Uber murders sure. and the Tinder murders and all that sort of shit. It's like Pokemon Go murders. Sure, I was thinking about happen. that. Like, I was thinking about <laughs> last night because and we were discussing it. There's a the Ushis thing. That is uh, a Woolworths uh, toy for the kids now. Plastic baby, fuck, yeah. it's so plastic. I banned them. Yeah, but you're gonna lose it. My my, my grandma, oh. my my mum buys them for the kids. I'm like, I won't. F- uh, fuck that. Every kid's toy is plastic, essentially. Oh but yeah, they kind of like they kind of yeah. like them. But it's, oh, I was uh, looking on eBay last night, Not and hater. Not some people hater. trying to charge like fifteen thousand dollars for this like the set rare one. of. Uh, like rare ones, but and then someone else is like, "Here's the whole set for five hundred bucks." I was like, "Is that not the one that <laughs> like?" But Fuck man, collectible but, uh, shit's gone so whack. Yeah, because like, it was. I, yeah. was. I was thinking, what when I was a kid, what did I do with what was the similar? Yeah. And oh, I think it was like the, the the sticker albums, mainly around football, but soccer. You, you, you also might have been like me. like bang on for like the Pogs and Tarzos. Oh, she might have been Tarzos. Like, no, years too old. Or, no, yeah, you were. Uh, but I never collected them because no, I was too yeah. poor. <laughs> 
No, seriously, I was too poor. My parents couldn't afford fucking the, the shit that would require, what was it, Thins or Lays or something? Uh, I believe it was the Smith chips. Yeah, 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 it was whatever it was. And we would buy the fucking Colvins or the fucking home brand so we'd oh, never get yeah, the yeah, yeah, I'd have that, to trade Tarzos. I'd try to have to trade Tarzos for acts of physical brain. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so the shit. I'd have to trade them for like for physical goods but it was, like, yeah. or, or like emotional goods. So I, I never got them at home at all, ever. But it was such a moment, like when me. you would all crowd together, and everyone goes <laughs> some, and some. You got like this many stickers, and some cunt pulls out like a three-inch deep pile. And you're that like, fuck. That and they just go fuck. like swap, like got it, got it, got it, swap, swap. And like, and there was a little, there's a little thing there. Like I was the guy. Little, I was the like, guy with social thing. I was the guy with three. <laughs> That, all it, the that, same. that I that I done for <laughs> fucking doing something really demeaning, like eating a cockroach. Yeah, I was gonna say it's always uh, eating bugs. Uh, it's always <laughs> eating bugs, isn't it? <laughs> That's the fucking like fucking primary school pro gamer move. Like, bro, <laughs> eat this fucking I eat the fry, I, bro. I, I, I think it's sent to school with fucking. With with uh, with like home brand chips and and sandwiches made with like peanut peanut butter and salad, <laughs> like, like you know, or we don't have butter, so here you go peanut butter and fucking lettuce off your pop cunt. I, I like that. Like like financial stability is correlated to like ability to cook. <laughs> like and there's like, like to combine flavors, bro. I learned to cook at fucking ten or twelve because my parents just didn't give a fuck about it. Because uh, yeah, I I learned to I learned I I created fucking. Shit out of my microwave that was delicious because my parents. Homeboy was hungry. <laughs> yeah, man. Fuck that. I didn't have no Tarzos. Well, necessity is the mother of all inventions. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Hey, listen, uh, we're at one hour 20. Um, we could f- probably fucking talk all night. But um, well, let's have it for round two. Um, uh, Campbell, you're a fucking genius. Okay. You're a fucking gift to me and Kenny. You've been a part of our life for. Uh, years now and it's been beautiful to fucking actually get a like uh, a reason to get you in I, I want to say us. same man I want to say same like obviously you guys are like part of like Sydney's fabric and it's just nice to fucking sit down it's, it's nice, nice to see you Sydney which is a beautiful thing it's nice yeah. to see to kids get. still doing uh, uh, colouring into the yeah. to the colouring in um, the set you made at, at the unicorn oh are they yeah still dude, there. fuck yeah, man dude kids. that was honestly like what, like I feel that like that was one of my first like kind of like bigger projects or something where I was where I like I mean bigger in the sense that they were like outside of yeah, socials yeah outside of socials there was real like world. A, yeah real world and like yeah I don't know thank you like a long overdue they're thank still, you they're for, still draw, um, they're still drawing like employing me on that yeah, I actually saw on your Instagram feed recently you did a thing of Venus um, you know Venus but like I out of the, the shell I and you've done the birth the, of Adam you've you, you done the, the touch of God and it was mummy's busy it was, mummy, yeah. it was mu- mummy's busy in the in the iPad and that's still something there the, the kids and my kids still colour in and, and kids at the Unicorn Hotel still fucking get their little Crayolas out and, and fill in the blanks and you know you've been a part of our life uh, in a really real sense um, for, for a few years now and it's really lovely to have you back in this context to talk about you know where you've gone and and what and actually what life is and it's you know, it's an incredible joy for us to be able to find these little loops and hooks back through time and yeah thanks so much for your for your time thank you dude thank you thank you both for having me now let's um there let's keep drinking whiskey off <laughs> fucking camera out <laughs> of here first tell the real stories <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck you don't deserve them yet bitches <laughs> Ciao for now uh, Not till the internet's way more rogue <laughs> <laughs> See you later